Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So I grow a lot of bottle gourds and I grow a lot of them in the ground. But I also grow quite a few of them in containers. Now what's the best way of growing bottle gourds in containers? Keep watching and I'll show you exactly how I grow my bottle gourds in containers. This is one of my containers that I've got bottle gourds planted into. It's about 40-50 litre pot. And as you can see, I've already got a couple of bottle gourds set in. And the other vines, I've got three bottle gourds planted into this pot. It's a little bit overcrowded, but... I think that'll be fine as long as I keep it fed and looked after quite well. So in a container that size, realistically I wouldn't recommend planting more than two bottle gourds into that pot. We've gone for three this year because we're struggling a little bit on planting space. So it's not ideal, but you can do it as long as you keep the pot fed and watered and looked after properly. I'll show you some of the other ones that I've got in containers as well. So for this type of plant, this is the container that I really like, the old style dustbins. And with this, you can fill loads and loads of compost into this. The plant can get really established and this will produce me uh, really well. I mean, I always have really good results with this. I'm going to show you exactly how I set this bucket up now. So come and have a look. Now the methods that I'm going to show you, they're going to save you on compost as well. Because a bucket that size, it's going to require at least um, 100 litres of compost and you don't want to fill something that size with so much compost. The roots of the plant will never get to the bottom of the pot so they'll never suck up the nutrients from the bottom. So you don't want to waste that precious material all the way down there. Let me show you what I do to get the plant established and into a plot of that size. Come on. The way I'm going to set this bucket up is I'm going to use principles taken from a Hugo culture bed. As well as that, I'm going to mix in elements of how you'd set up a worm bin. So we'll, we'll combine the two to make us a nice nutritious mix. Something that's going to provide food for the plants all the way through the growing season. So the first thing that I'm going to add, as you know, if you've been watching my channels, the first thing that I add always with these kind of containers is loads and loads of wood chips. So I've got a bucket of wood chips here, that's going in. So the thing about wood chips is they're going to serve two purposes for us. They're going to allow lots and lots of drainage for us, but at the same time, because of the way wood is, and I'll show you, that was sat in a, in a bucket with, and it had had some water on it. Now this is going to act like a sponge and it's going to hold on to water and it's going to so, slowly release it back to the soil as the soil needs it. Having a foundation in a pot like this with wood, whether you've got wood chips or wood, that kind of stuff, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, some of you might be worried about loss of nitrogen because of the wood that's being buried. So I'm gonna compensate for that. But at the same time, I like to add this material in most of my planting beds anyway, and I'll show you what it is. This is horse manure. If I could have got hold of cow manure, I would have much preferred cow manure. It's much, because of the way the cow stomachs are, they digest the food a lot better and the manure is much higher quality. But horse manure is good enough for me because that's what I can get hold of and it's free. But this is fairly fresh and a lot of people will be warning you about adding fresh horse manure to, a, to plants. But I'm not worried about the harsh nitrogen that's going to come from this because it's going to be at a level where the roots are never going to get to not at least for a few months not until this has had a chance to break down so i'm going to add lots and lots of fresh manure to this straight on top of the wood chips as long as that's beyond where the roots going to get to straight away it's perfectly fine to add by the time the roots get down to there it's going to take at least two or three months and the worms will have broken that down very nice for us by that time now what I'm going to add is lots and lots of kitchen scraps. So I've got bits of broccoli. Um, I'm going to save that for a little bit higher up. The banana peel. Onion peels. Bits of cheese things. There's, there's lots and lots of kitchen scraps. There's bones. There's bits of meat in here. There's bits of wood chips in here. There's lots and lots of kitchen scraps. Bones, eggshells. All that's going in. And it's full of worms already. It was just sat on the grass and now it's just f filled up with worms. So that's fine. And there's a nice pong to it as well, so lovely. Get that banana peel in there, that's fine. 
what I've just added is a load of uh, meat and rotten meat products so bits of chicken legs uh, chi chicken carcass there that's all going in and that's all going to break down and it's going to feed the plants nicely a lot of people will tell you not to add um, meat products to a compost pile and I think that's a real waste because those of us that eat meat our waste contains meat products it contains bones it contains skin instead of just putting that in a bin and sending it off to landfill we can use that we can provide fertilizer for our plants and we're saving the amount that we're sending off to landfill so it's two it has two benefits so now that I've got about um, a third of the way up the up the bin I'm gonna start adding my compost so all the, all this time what I've done is I've saved a third of filling this uh, pot with other stuff than compost so I'm not wasting my money I mean some people will tell you I've seen gardeners on TV tell you to use polystyrene to use plastic bottles polystyrene it never breaks down but chemicals leach from that into, your, into the soil and it's bad for the environment it's bad for you so don't do it rather than that use wood use natural products now what I'm going to add is my favorite lots and lots of homemade compost so that's one bucket in and that's two buckets going in and there's still lots of space for more compost to be added I'm not going to fill it right the way to the top because I want space to work in when I put my plant in here and I want to add a layer of mulch when I get to the top as well so that's that let's now let's get some plants planted into here and get this into the position where we want it. And these are the two that I'm going to go for. They've got a nice long vine on them. Uh, and this is what this one's actually fruiting. So one of the things that I didn't show you that I add into my mix is my homemade bone meal as well as potash. Now this is wood ash, and it's made from wood ash and it's made from uh, bones that are burnt down and ground down. I've done a separate video on how you can actually make this. I'll leave a link for it up here, go and have a look at that. It's really good for your plants. It saves on waste going to landfill. It saves us from using, having to use blood, fish and bone from, uh, from, from the shops because that contains pig blood, it contains pig's bones and it's not, and it's not jive for Muslims to actually use that. So for us, there are some, some re religious observations that we have to make there. It's a good helpful that I'm adding. Because it's homemade, we can afford to be as generous as we want to. It's not cost us anything to make, apart from having a barbecue and chucking the, the bones on afterwards. Right, now we're going to get planting. So this is the first plant that's going in. You can see it's starting to get a little bit pot bound. It wants out of that space. So I'm going to plant him just here. I'm going to just make a planting hole. I'm not going to make it too deep so I can top it off with some more compost. So I'm just going to pop him, pop this one in here and just gently cover around it. See, the, see quite a lot of the tops exposed. I'm still going to fill that up with compost, you see. And then I'm going to make another hole on this side. I'll get the other plant in as well. So we've grown these in just milk bottles. You can use all these old recycled plastic bits to make your um, plant pots. You'll save yourself some money and you'll save the environment a little bit as well. So right, those plants are in. Let me get those tied up and then the wind's not going to blow them all over the place. Yeah, this one's going over this arch and I want huddles hanging down from this arch as I walk past this here. I want to see them, I want to see them everywhere. And we've pinched these out so we can get the extra vines going. And it's the secondary and the, and the tertiary vines that actually produce the fruit. So let's have that one hanging off there and we'll get a huddle hanging down there and it'll be nice for us to see as we're walking past. That's lovely. And the second plant, I'm going to send crawling across the old greenhouse roof and I'm going to fill this up with some more compost what I'm going to do first of all though is I'm going to get rid of some of these bottom leaves because you want a nice clean base at the bottom you want lots of airflow so 
there we go. Right, let me get some more compost for that and we'll water it in nicely. So let's add some more compost to the top. Now, this compost is all growing media and fertiliser for the plants. Now that I've got near near enough to the top and I've filled in, filled in the plant's roots with the compost, now what will happen is if I pour water into there, that compost will settle and the roots will become exposed. So what I always do is I always mulch the top of my pots with something other than my planting medium. And what I've got here is some uh, wood chips and some manure that's not broken down from my worm bin. So, so all that's in here is all of that sort of material, rough material that's not broken down. There's wood chips, there's bits of rotting material, there's some cardboard, all of this sort of stuff. That's going to provide my uh, mulch. There's even a bone in here, that's fine. That's going to be my mulch for, for this pot. It'll protect the soil. So what I want to show you is when you just use compost, what can happen is the soil can get, it can get quite dusty and form a crust as well at the top so the water doesn't penetrate underneath. You can get away with it on leafy small growing plants, that's fine because what you can do is you can come and water two or three times and you'll get that. But on a big plant like that, with that kind of bucket, I always like to mulch with, a, with some quite rough stuff that's not going to form that crust, that's going to allow that water penetration at the top. And it's the same with most of our planting beds as well. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to get the old greenhouse taken down this year. So it can serve as one more purpose as a climbing frame for this, for this plant. Uh, one plant can go over there, one plant can go over there. If you go back um, to my gourd harvesting video, this is where, I planted, where my son picked a really nice gourd last year. I'll leave a link for that video up here. And inshallah, for the, very soon we'll have some nice uh, huddles coming off this plant. So that's how we grow our gourds in buckets. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. It doesn't cost anything, so make sure you do. And I'll see you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.